please give a warm welcome to Rabbi Morty Katz. My correct title is actually Chief Rabbi of New York. No, I'm not, well, I'm exaggerating a bit. I'm not exactly Chief Rabbi. I'm Chief Rabbi of Brooklyn, New York. Not exactly the whole of Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm Chief Rabbi of, of Borough Park, you know, the area of Borough Park in Brooklyn, and not the whole of Borough Park. I'm actually Chief Rabbi of the block between 43rd Street, 44th Street, 15th and 16th Avenue, and not the whole block. <laughs> I'm actually Chief Rabbi of the Shtibble on 44th Street, and even that's a bit contentious. I'm having a big machloikas with my brother-in-law about that. <laughs> and so I called up a few travel agents, and I got this really cheap fare for $600 on Air India. It was a long trip. You had to go to New York, London, Bombay, Adelaide, <laughs> Sydney. And anybody here ever flown on Air India before? Let me tell you, the first thing I discovered about Air India when I got to the airport and I looked at the aircraft, the first thing I discovered is that Air India still has a smoking section. It's the engine. <laughs> and, And when I got onto the plane, I was looking around at the condition of the aircraft, and the stewardess said, Rabbi, something, you look nervous, something bothering you? I said, I just want to ask you one question. How often do these things crash? And she said, usually only once. <laughs> and let me tell you, my friends, Air India, let me paint a little picture for you. Air India is the epitome of a no-frills airline. There are no movies, no entertainment or anything. For entertainment, people were passing around photographs of their children, their grandchildren. And I have to tell you also, there was a terrible incident in the middle of the flight. This Meshuggah, this lunatic, ran into the cockpit, held a knife to the pilot's throat and demanded to be flown to wherever his luggage was going. <laughs> and, and then it at mealtime, what happens at mealtime on Air India, if you're sitting in economy class as I was, they give you, they give you a bowl and they tell you to go and beg from the first class. <laughs> I... The doorbell rings again, I open the door, who's standing there this time? I couldn't believe it, give up my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law from Florida standing there with three suitcases, totally unexpected. I said, what a surprise, we weren't expecting to see you. How long are you planning to stay? And she said, as long as you're happy to have me. I said, what, you don't even have time for a cup of tea? <laughs> and they took me to even to this incredible cinema, the IMAX cinema. Have you ever been to the IMAX cinema? It's incredible. They had this movie, their documentary. It was fascinating. And you sit there with these special spectacles, three-dimensional spectacles, and you look, and it's just so real. It's incredible. But actually, in the middle of the, of the movie, nature called, and I had to go to the bathroom, so I excused myself. And I'm walking around in the lobby of the cinema with these glasses, <laughs> looking for the men's room and I couldn't see it and I saw this guy standing in front of me I said excuse me can you tell me where the toilet is and he said how would I know I'm in the movie <laughs> but I bought my wife jewelry which made my life easier for about an hour and a half not that I'm denigrating my wife in any way God forbid because my wife I have to tell you is the most wonderful caring sharing devoted highly intelligent woman just to give you an idea how intelligent my wife is, we have a television program in America called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? You probably have it here also. And my wife was on a special edition of this program a few weeks ago. It was called Battle of the Rebbitsons or something. And she won every, she broke every record on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. She didn't win any money. But when they asked if she wants to phone a friend, she did, and she stayed on the telephone for two and a half hours. <laughs> My poor Nebuch brother-in-law had no muzzle at all. He had bad luck with both of his marriages. His first wife left him, and the second one didn't. <laughs> and I wanted to go to... There's a great restaurant in New York, I don't know if any of you have been there, called the Prime Grill. And it is meat, every type of meat you can imagine. Steak, lamb chops, beef, sausages, they're really into meat. And I love meat, and my wife is not a big fan of meat. I remember we went there one night, 
and I was drooling over the menu and my wife said to the waiter, so what's the fish of the day? And he looked at her and he said, water buffalo. <laughs> and by the way, people shouldn't think that because I'm from a very orthodox community that we push our children into getting married because that's not how we work at all in my family anyway. I remember because I always knew, decided that when I grow up I will not push my children into getting married because I remember when I was a young boy of 18 or 19 and my parents were hacking me and hacking me, it's time to get married, it's time to get married and I couldn't stand it and then the worst thing would be you go to a wedding and all the old aunties and boobers and old women be hacking you you know, you're next, you're next, you're next I couldn't stand it, the only way I was able to put a stop to that was I started saying the same thing to them at funerals Center is worth millions of dollars, is raking in a fortune, patronized by Madonna. You know that? Madonna, she's really into the Kabbalah, she wears a red thing around her wrist, and she gave $30 million for this Kabbalah Center, I couldn't believe it. And she's so spiritual now, and she's changed her name now to Esther because it's more spiritual, and Madonna, she's now known as Esther. And it's not very well known here, but Mel Gibson is also now into the Kabbalah. It's part of. It's part of his therapy, and, and he's actually changed his name to Achashverosh <laughs> onto dance. Thank you so much for having me here tonight, and Mazel Tov to the Shul.